Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, Mr. Farmer. Why do you have bacon in front of you? I love bacon, that's why. Who doesn't love bacon? I have a bacon story okay. and a bacon journey. You think about bacon in the way we know it today. If you buy it in the store, you look at it and there's so many different avenues. Right. We're gonna give you today a recipe to make your own bacon mm -hmm. in your own kitchen in three days. Mm -hmm. We'll call it the three day cure or whatever. It's way better. But then if you think about the curing process itself, mm -hmm. let me ask you a simple question. Do you plan on us living in a cave anytime soon where we don't have access to a refrigerator or anything like that for like, I don't know, six, eight years? Yeah, that'd be fun. No, actually Wrong no. Wrong answer. <laughs> no. No plans on living no, in a cave? No, no plan for a cave. Bacon as we know it today, old habits die hard. You think about the old days. I love the old ways and I love the old days and you watch the Bill Dixon segment. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, everybody was putting up their bacon. Things were different. Right. These people who had been through hard times, had been through the depression, didn't have refrigerators, didn't have the simplest of things. Not too long ago, people in our lifetime did not have electricity. So how did they store things? How did they preserve things? Right. How did they prevent botulism? Right. I don't want to eat something and die. It sounds rather unpleasant. Yes, it does. <laughs> so you think about the hog killing process. Mm -hmm. We've been all through that. They would fatten their pig up and get it as big as they possibly could. Why? More meat. More meat <laughs> at all costs. That's, That's right. where we're going. So they had to cure their meat right. to store it mm -hmm. for long periods of time because a lot of these people had a lot of kids. And when you killed that big hog or two hogs or whatever, that was your meat for the winter. That was the way when they killed an elk way back then, or a bear, they cured a ham. Interesting. These habits die hard. So when you go to the store, you see years and years of research. First of all, the smoke and the salt, what do they do? They preserve, they dry, they shrink. The smoke actually is antimicrobial. What it does is it kills any kind of pathogen in there, any kind of microbe that can make you sick. Okay but they found that out accidentally. In the old days, you see, you see on the West Coast, they used to take, the Indians used to take the uh, smoked fish, they put them over the fire, they let them dry, right? while they let them dry to get the moisture out of them because that's where the, that's where the bacteria stays. Yeah. They want to get as much moisture out as possible and they want that salt to sink in and the yeah. smoke. And that was the, that was the initial cure. They figured that over time. And when that smoke comes up and imparts that antimicrobial resistance shield right. on that, it tastes good. Yes, it does. So they figured out that they'd smoke fish, they could keep it for long periods of time and use it over time. That was passed down and passed down and passed down. Now what happened in the not too distant past? They started using potassium nitrate, saltpeter, you heard of saltpeter. Mm -hmm. Carter Caves, there's saltpeter cave. They used to mine saltpeter out of that to use for TNT. Really? Or they would use it to blow things up. Okay. They would use it for uh, rudimentary gunpowder. So here you are having something that they put in there, right. potassium nitrate, that stops the growth of microbes so you don't get botulism. And the later progression of that, the potassium nitrate, are the pink salts that we have today. Mm -hmm. Now when they cure that today, it keeps it on the shelf a lot longer, and that's what they use. When you heard old Bill Dixon talk about pink salt, right. that's the latest iteration okay. of, of that. Now, here's my journey with bacon. You know as well as I do, if we just went to the store and bought regular bacon off the mm -hmm. shelf, we grabbed a pack of bacon, and it had those nitrates, nitrites in it, right. and I ate it, it made me sick. Me too. It gave yeah. me indigestion. Right. I don't know the reason for that. Then I started seeing cured versus uncured. Right. What does it mean? What does uncured bacon mean? Is that without nitrates, nitrates? They use something in there to cure that. A lot of times it's celery seed, which has those same qualities Hmm. And it actually, over time, as it leaches into that, it becomes a nitrate, or those okay. properties do the same okay. thing. So if it is uncured, it still has technically nitrates. And I have yeah. bought that and tried that, and it does not, it's not as bad on my system. There's something in the pink salt that bothers me. Yeah. Therefore, my journey to the bacon that we have today is a long and drawn out one. I don't want to get sick when I right. eat bacon. And you like to eat a lot of bacon. I love bacon. I know you And do. they're finding out that animal fats aren't as bad as they mm -hmm. thought. So, today, you can go out and you can buy 
pork belly. What is bacon? What part of the pig is it from? Right. The belly. The belly. This is what you recognize right here as bacon. That strip right there. Does that look bacony to you? It looks bacony. Now, you want your bacon to have taste. Mm -hmm. This green bacon right here, mm -hmm. that's green. What okay. does that mean? It has just been processed. It's that piece of the belly right there that we consider bacon. In Europe, different parts are used. In Canada, sometimes you use loin. In the United States, this is considered bacon, the okay. belly. Yum. Yeah. The thing is, people people want bacon to have this shelf life for three years, and we don't need to do that. Yeah. This is a five pound piece of bacon that we're gonna cure in three days, and we're gonna eat it in You'll less eat it. than a week. You'll eat it in a day. <laughs> You'll <laughs> eat it tonight. Day. Don't tell all, right. all our secrets. Okay. Well, here's a picture of a whole side that we cured, and we cold smoked this. That means we go up on the hill, mm -hmm. put it in the cold smoker that we built. When temperatures are lower outside, we want it to be cool. You don't want it to be more than 70, 80 degrees, and you would just want to roll lots of hickory smoke on this. I want right. hickory smoke on this. Hickory smoked bacon, you've heard of that. Yeah. So we roll that smoke in that cold smokehouse. The fire is way separate. It cools down. All you're getting, you're not getting the fire and the flame and the heat, you're getting, you're getting smoke. the smoke, it rolls up. And here's the way we cured this. Equal parts, kosher salt, brown sugar, real maple syrup, mm -hmm. which as you know, when we did it, there's only one right. ingredient in that, that is sap from yes. a maple tree that you reduce down. Equal parts. We're gonna do about a third of a cup of, of each, each for a five pound slab. Tell Tell cherry pepper. Your favorite. And cayenne. So we got black pepper, and Bill Dixon called it red pepper. Called it red pepper? Called okay. it red pepper. Okay. Now, as this sits for three days, a three day cure, each day you take it, it's already got its little juice going, mm -hmm. you turn it over each day. Take it out, set it here, put it in the smoker for a mm -hmm. couple hours. Now, I'm gonna actually put some heat on this. This will cause that to shrink. Okay. It's gonna make it easier to cut. It's gonna get a little patina, yeah. a little darker patina on it. And again, you could bring that internal temperature up to 120 degrees while it's in the smoker. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it on about 250. Now, boom, in the smoker, how many hours you want. It's edible like this. How much smoke do you want on it? I like quite a bit, okay. so a couple hours. I don't want to get that internal temperature up. I don't want to cook it, per se. Right. I don't want to get it over 120, 130 degrees. When we cook it, we will attain that, oh, well over that 160 degree for pork. Actually, 150 now. But we're going to attain that temperature through the actual frying process. All right, let's put it in the smoker. Look what channel made. I love it. It's more workspace. You know, we got workspace here, we got workspace there, but when we're not using the stove, is that right. not handy? It matches the covers. Yeah. It looks really it's pretty. pretty. Like you can just have it out to serve now, food. Now, we're getting ready to make a cake. Mm -hmm. We don't eat cake every day, but we I heard Dr. Matt say, have your piece of cake. He did, didn't he? Just everything right. in moderation. Today, okay. we're talking about two of our guilty pleasures. That's right. Bacon, our way. And sweets. And sweets. <laughs> but we got to have something healthy going on in our lives, mm -hmm. and we do. We try right. to, we don't get on our soapbox, but you got to have your leafy vegetables, you got to have your greens, you got to have that. Right. And where do we get ours? Mac. We had a Mac <laughs> attack and went to Georgetown, Elwood Stock Farms. Let's get our good stuff over there. That's right. All right, Mike, I'm always fascinated to come out here and see what you're doing. You've been in business for a long time. What's new out here on Elmwood Stock Farm? So we, we got the, uh, some of like the spinaches that overwintered. Mm -hmm. So then as soon as the weather broke, it just came on. It's big, beautiful, lush foliage. We'll see that. The transplants of kale and chard and all the spring vegetables that are coming on. Uh, the beets and, let and uh, carrots are still really small, right. but they're doing great because we're able to keep them weeded this year. One new thing for us, you asked earlier, we're doing more winter growing, like in the high tunnels under plastic, so you can use protected agriculture, a lot of people call it. So an example of in the high tunnels, 270 foot long tunnel, plastic tunnel, that's big enough that we can get equipment in there and actually work dirt and get, you know, work the ground, not like a greenhouse or tabletop stuff. So we had uh, lettuce and spinach and chard and arugula in there all winter. And then we emptied it out in March and planted the early tomatoes. And some of those tomatoes are grafted now. Some of these specialty tomatoes, oh, the wow. old heirloom, are grafted onto hardier rootstock. 
So that's a pretty good way to get virus and fungus control by having the right rootstock and not having to spray anything. That, so that's an example of some of the modern organic techniques that go with old timey production systems. Wow, that is so cool. So we had spinach and lettuce and kales all the way through March this year. Oh, wow. So our customers are really loving that. And uh, you know, you need to eat your kale every week, so you gotta grow kale every week, the way we look at it. We need our leafy green vegetables. Absolutely. We gotta have them. Yeah. Now something that I found out recently, um, you can come out here for meat and eggs. Right. You do have an on-site store we that's do. open through the week, we I do. suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Generally so. nine to five, give us time to get started in the morning. Uh, we also have a store, we do our CSA pickup, where customers pick up their CSA shares Tuesday afternoons, 4.30 to 6.30. So we set all the vegetables up on tables, farmer's market style. Oh, wow. And if you're CSA, you're prepaid, you just get X number of share, X number of items, right. or anybody can walk in and purchase. Oh, wow. Now again, you're at, uh, you're at uh, the farmer's market, which yeah. one? Be at Lexington Farmer's Market at downtown at the Pavilion every Saturday the rest of my life. We go to Cincinnati Sunday mornings. Uh, we have a booth at Louisville St. Matthews Farmer's Market and here in Georgetown in the summer. So if you want vegetables, fruits that have absolutely no chemicals, correct? Right, correct. No pesticides, no herbicides, no, none no, of that stuff. No. And as far as as the meat, what do you have? We got certified organic, grass fed, dry aged, USDA choice Angus beef. Wow. We have pastured poultry, both turkey or chicken. Um, we have pork, it's kind of new to us the last two or three years, so we have the traditional cuts of pork. Our bacon is uncured. I've been eyeballing you, bacon. Yeah, yeah, isn't it something? <laughs> yeah, it just has brown sugar and salt, so it's just kind of seasoned pork belly, technically. Right. So you either like it or you don't, you know. Right. But we want to stay away from all the nitrates and any of those cured products. Yeah. Once again, thank Great. you so much. Now, how Thanks do people find out. you? How do people find you? Elmwoodstockfarm.com. Or your Facebook page. Elmwood Stock Farm. Hit like. Like. It's very easy. Yeah. One movement. That's what I hear. I'm Mac. And I'm Tim. And we're back. And we're slim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. All right. Now, again, guilty pleasure number two. Mm -hmm. This is your grandma, your old. You know. Oh, the old cookbook. This cookbook, I'm telling you, she had every kind of cake there is to make. And I found an orange cake. And, you can and I made it. it. You can have your cake oh, and you can eat it it's too. It's so good too. This is delicious. And you were good too, because you know, Allie has the their orange cream soda. So we put that in. I kind of mixed that with my liquids a little to give it that creamier taste. You just wait. Now, you obviously don't want to eat the whole cake. Right. You share it with your friends. Yeah. And then you eat a half a cake. Well, I made it. I'm only doing half a recipe because it's too much. Because mm. we don't need that big a cake. So I thought if I make half a recipe, we won't eat as much. All right, now no further words. Let's see what you do here. All right, I'm cutting this recipe in half, like I said, and it's very right. simple. We're gonna take the first five ingredients, and you're gonna be my mixer today. I'm a, I'm a good mixer. Yeah, and this, yeah, do this with the spatula first. This is a cup of flour. All right. Three quarters a cup of sugar. All right. And a pinch of salt. So to me, you know me. Eh, that's about a pinch. What do you it's think? A pinch of salt. Pinch. I like big pinches. All right. Now here's where we're gonna take a third of a cup of a liquid. I have a little bit of orange juice, and then we're gonna do a little, a little bit more of this. Orange jelly. Get so it. a third cup overall. So you got yeah. half, half orange juice. So you could do all orange juice. You could do all the We're gonna mix it. We thought that might be mm -hmm. kind of fun. So we're this, gonna put that in. Mm, it smells good already. All right. All right. Now the last thing I'm gonna add to this is a third cup of lard instead of Crisco. It called for Crisco. Our lard. Yes. Our is lard. It time to and that's the end of the lard. So we need to render we some need more. more. All right. That was our first five ingredients. Okay. Kind of looks like cookie dough, doesn't it? Yeah. We want to make this a cake. How's it smell? It smells delicious. All right. One egg. All right. And we are gonna add a tablespoon and a half of baking powder. And then a half a cup of water. And you go ahead and start mixing that. All right, yep. I will. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, if you wanna stop for a second, I'm gonna add a little something else. All right, what's next? Orange rind. Gotcha. I'm just gonna put as much as you want in there. I like a now, lot. Now, this, this may sound silly, but this is just me. This is an organic orange, which has not been sprayed That's right. by anything. And if I'm if I want the rind off an orange, I, I want it I want it to be not sprayed. That's just me. Good thinking. All right, that's gonna just give it some more flavor. That, that really, that really adds to the smell of that. Yeah. All right, I think you look good. 
Now, one of the great things about this cake, it's not one of those cakes that's going to be bright orange. Right. Um, it's a very low-key looking cake, but mm -hmm. the flavor, it's amazing. it just rips out of there and it's delicious. All right, I'm just going to put a little olive oil in here. And some people like the flour and stuff, but I think we're going to eat it right out of this pan. I'm not worried about dumping it out. So I just, it's its new home. Yeah, it's a beautiful pan. All right. Um, you give me that spatula if you want to scrape the rest of that it's still out. still got a bunch of lard on it. That's all right. You can, it'll cook right in. That's fine. We'll mix it up. All right. We're going to pop that in the oven now at 350 for 40 minutes. For 40 minutes. Yeah. You want to keep an eye on it, yeah. as with any baking. Right. Thing. Now, this show is about guilty pleasure. We're not doing a meal, per se, because mm -hmm. we've got other things going on. We're visiting right. Mac, and we had a situation on the farm. I noticed that Holly, even though she was taking care of last year right. with her feet, I noticed her hooves were starting to, to get a little long and misshapen. Yeah. I thought, ah, it's time to call Dr. Alex. Now, he told us some interesting things about where donkeys come from, right. like a desert climate. So he's going to tell us why eating grass does things to their feet really? and makes them need to be taken care of. But one thing I want to say here, we wanted to get this thing done, but Holly only loves Kelly. And that's the truth. And that's the truth. So yeah. Kelly coaxed her into the pen. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it because you and I, right. more you, she really likes the ladies. She does, but I, Kelly spends time she with her. She loves Kelly. So right. we had to get Kelly in there. <laughs> to get her in so the pen. So if the camera work is bad, because Kelly was keeping, Loving on her donkey. Holly Loving calm. Holly. And I think Holly did pretty good, but you'll good. see right here. Dr. Alex is back out. Last time you were here, it was Maybelle's feet. Yep. This time it was Holly. Now that's Kelly's Holly, and she loves Kelly. Yes, she does. And apparently she likes you. Well, and it, you know, you warmed so up. So far. <laughs> how much, if you had to guess, just a rough estimate, how much of your work is on feet? I, you know, quite a bit. I, especially this time of year mm -hmm. when we hit spring. Right. We've got lush green grass full of sugar and carbohydrates, which a lot of our horses and don't need. Right. Um, so much of, uh, especially donkey being naturally a desert animal, not needing all the all the uh, fresh green grass. You know, this is pretty good for her really because it's a rocky hillside, which mm -hmm. would be a little bit more natural footing for a donkey. I mean, the big thing that we worry about is laminitis. It's when those lamina get inflamed, and when they become inflamed, those lamina actually separate. Uh, and you can imagine if you had a fingernail that separated, that would be pretty painful. And then especially if, you know, um, a quarter or more of your body weight were dependent upon that oh, yeah. surface. So the other, the other part of that that becomes painful in laminitis is, is the bone inside the hoof, which is P3 or the coffin bone. Because that lamina separates, which is what suspends that, that, that bone inside the foot, that bone can actually go from level to rotated. Mm -hmm. And that's what's known as founder. Gotcha. So that's, that's painful because then all that pressure is going straight to the tip of the bone rather than being dispersed through the foot in gotcha. the suspension system. So she is not laminitic, she's not foundered. Now give us a preview of uh, what you'll do to get her treated today. So depending on her level of cooperation, which seems um, to be pretty good so far. Yeah, I mean, she's warmed up pretty quickly, more than it seemed like she was going to. Well, um, basically trying to get her hoof back to flat. We want, we want the, the weight, her body weight, in contact with the ground dispersed as evenly as possible. Gotcha. So we're just gonna trim away dead hoof, cracked hoof to a certain point. We don't wanna get into that sensitive lamina. Uh, we wanna stay in sort of the, the tissue that's already grown out, like mm -hmm. the whites of your fingernail. You know, right. it's not a sensitive part to trim. All right, so this is a rasp. What we do with this rasp is kind of clean up these edges, round off the toe. You can see where we've taken the extra off, squared that toe up a little bit, and now she's putting most of the pressure from the heel bulbs across the front of the toe instead of rocking back on those heel bulbs and kind of displacing her weight, so. Well, how'd she do? I think she did really well. Um, there are plenty of donkeys out there that I have to sedate to do what we did, especially when it comes to the back feet. Uh, I imagine. Yeah. I've seen her out here playing. They play rough. Her and Junior have fun. Mm -hmm. She'll kick that foot out there and knock him upside the face and yeah. he'll stop for a minute like, right. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, even for an 800 pound bull, you know, sear yeah. calf, he, he still feels it, so. 
Well, she's got her nails all done. She's got a new halter on. And she's ready to go to town. Yeah, she, I think she's about to forgive us. She's coming back. I'll probably call in a couple of weeks. That's probably time for the girls to take a look at them. Okay. Make sure they're good and healthy because I'm thinking about bringing a ram in because we, we like our lamb. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. Thanks. That sounds good, man. Give Thanks, me a call. Thanks, Dr. Alex. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm ready. What do you smell now, Mrs. Farmer? Amazing yumminess. Bacon. That smells so good. Got our smoke smell now. Now, you can tell that's kind of leaning up towards me. I'm going to cut this off square. I'm going to have a big old hunk we can use for beans like and bacon or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off to get it square so we can get some bacon. Now, you see what that looks like in there? Yeah. What does that look like, Mrs. Farmer? Looks like bacon. bacon. Look at that right there. Oh, wow. soup beans. Now, I just sharpened my knife and I got a big long knife so I can make one cut all the way through. To me, Yum. <laughs> to make you that happy, is bacon. That right there. I can't wait I to try it. I just can't tell you what it smells like in here. Ooh, yum. That smells country right there. Mm -hmm. That smells country. That is a big old piece of bacon right there. I can make a meal out of that. That looks delicious. Just that. I know you could. You want to try, Mrs. Farmer? Are you going to share? Yeah. You are? Still a little hot. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you kidding me? White, the fatty part. That's good. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We got the smoke. We got the salt. We got the sugar. We don't have the It's chemicals. like eating candy. Yeah. Fantastic. I can't stress this enough. Go to your butcher shop. Mm -hmm. Ask for, I think it was, that ended up being about $7 a pound. Okay. What does good bacon cost right. you? Really good bacon. Oh, yeah. $8 a yeah. pound? Oh, my. Really good. Good let's, job. Let's, let's eat a bunch of this, and then let's do dessert. Let's have cake. All right. <laughs> Yum. Wow. If you're looking at it from a distance, it's not one of these glamour cakes. Right. It's bright orange or anything like that. The beauty is in the taste. That's right. Some. You're going to do a little uh, confectioner sugar icing. icing. You know, we were thinking we got this this cream. And a lot of times, I usually use water with mm -hmm. confectioner sugar. I always got to put a little vanilla. So let's put just, just enhance the just a little bit, yeah. Too. I don't know, as much as you want in there. And I'm just going to add very little L8 because this stuff gets real loose real quick. Let's see what kind of icing we can come up with. Just some L8 in there, some orange. Then this, and you know what, before I finish this, I'm going to put a little more of this peel in there. You want to taste it, see if you like it? I know I like it. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm just going to kind of drip this. It's not real icing. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. Now, again, this is not this is not a showroom cake that you no. put on board. This is old-fashioned. This is what you get at church. Yeah, we're just going to eat it right out of the container. Oh. What do you think? Oh. You get the first bite. Mm. It's almost like a sponge cake, isn't I it? that bite right, All right. there. What do you think? Wow. Isn't that good? And sweet? Mm. Wow. And your icing. They added a little to it, didn't it? Mm -hmm. A little bit of more orange to it. I like that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> good. Mm. You know what? That was really good. I'm glad you liked it. And if you like that recipe, Mrs. Farmer, where would you go to find recipes like that? I'd go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You would? And what I'd, would you find there? I'd find this orange cake here. Hit subscribe, that way when the new video comes out, you'll see you'll it. You'll see it. And Facebook page, how in the world do you manage to get on our Facebook page? We just clicked yeah. over to 60,000 folks on it. Wow, that. you hit like, they're all hitting like, aren't they? Boom, hit like. hit like and you're there, we talk, we share recipes. Well, I love cake and I love bacon. I know you do. And it's our kitchen, we can do what that's we right. want. That's right, that's right. And it's all about? Good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. That's more cake. I think we should. 3190487 or email timfarmerck@gmail.com